<coughs> thank you for introduction. And uh, so, so today we have uh, two talks. So it's it's on, right? So um, fifty minutes each or one hour each. So <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I, I have to make sure. So <laughs> and so uh, <coughs> and so. Anyway, so thanks for coming. So today I will uh, give you an overview of uh, uh, this. Uh, things about uh, jumpization and uh, its uh, more recent uh, stories. Um, sorry, how do I this close yeah, it? <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Uh, how to okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. So and um, so 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 uh, at uh, at the beginning I will uh, first uh, recall a uh, bit what uh, uh, we know about three manifolds. And so this is, uh, if you didn't come yesterday, that's fine. And uh, you will get, uh, as a mathematician, you get a better, more precise uh, things. And today, so it's, uh, it's uh, still it's, uh, outline, okay? So, uh, <coughs> so let me, uh, uh, okay. So, so in these two talks, actually only we have uh, one transparency, but I, it will, I will divide in the middle. So whenever the time comes up, comes up, then we take a break, and then come back for, for more tutorials. Okay. So, so we assume this, uh, in this talk, for simplicity, we let's assume as M is a oriented closed manifold dimension N. Okay. So, so of course, some of these things you can extend to a non-compact case. And uh, actually, it turns out to be uh, sometimes extension is e uh, stand uh, straightforward. Sometimes extension is uh, is more substantial. So, so, so remaining metric is locally given by uh, a positive definite matrix value of functions. So this is local expression. So the when you change your coordinates, the the they go from one coordinate to another in the in the in the natural way. So yesterday I I said uh, it's a uh, the curvature is the invariant of, uh, of metric and the diffeomorphisms, and it measures how space is curved. Okay. So, so the rich curvature is part of a curvature given locally by uh, symmetric matrix valued functions. So what's a good thing about rich curvature is uh, it has the same number of components as, an, as, a, as a metric. Okay. So it measures a uh, deviation of volume form from the uh, Euclidean space. But today is uh, I don't want to give you a definition, okay? So I want to give you a definition. Sorry, what's, I guess I pushed the wrong, uh, wrong button. <laughs> oh. yeah, well, I didn't read it, so I <laughs> Okay. What <laughs> happened? That shouldn't just be, okay. As this uh, technology, mm -hmm. okay, the open, the open. No, this it's is not. The, <laughs> <laughs> it's here. It's, uh, yeah. oh, no, no. It's that. Uh, oh, it's that uh, because you didn't. Uh, maybe the file was not. Uh, no, no, this is not. Uh, didn't uh, didn't store on the on the desk. So it's uh, <laughs> so it's got only two pages. <laughs> Cast, cast, this, this one. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's yeah, no, no. it was not stored, so it's a. Uh, okay. <coughs> I think um, I do later, so anyway, so. Uh, <coughs> So, so here is a, uh, um, so this can be treated, uh, regarded as definition. So, so, so in the textbook, if you go to Tokamo's uh, book, this probably is a theory, okay? And because uh, now, in, in nowadays, in the textbook, you first give a definition of a curvature in terms of metrics, and, uh, and then the express rich curvature as a choice of uh, curvature in certain way. What's going on? So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I guess uh, 
I didn't like uh, this. <laughs> yeah, okay. But I didn't take out the USB, so it's... Uh, no, the problem of updating of the program. Okay. <laughs> okay, so anyway, so, 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 so I say, it's, uh, uh, now in, uh, if you go to uh, geometry classes, they basically tell you uh, how to define a curvature in terms of metrics. Uh, analytically, then the proof of theorem like that, okay? But it's actually, you can use this as a, as a definition. Namely, you, can, you look at the point P, the fixed point P, and look at the nearby point, and you join these uh, two points by a uh, shortest uh, curve, uh, we call it geodesics, right? So then the V is the unit uh, direction of this unit vector pointing in the direction of geodesic, and uh, as you assume the distance is so close, two points are so close to each other, then you compute the warning form at the point X, and against the warning form at the point P, which I use DP, DV0, but that just means uh, the uh, warning at point P. And uh, as, uh, because space is curved, as I said even yesterday, so the two warning forms may not be the same, you just look at the expansion, right? So expansion of uh, in terms of uh, distance, you get this formula. Okay, so that that is the Ricci curvature. Okay, so this way you can actually make it rigorously as a definition of Ricci curvature, and this also shows you the the Ricci curvature tell, measures the deviation of volume form from a from a fixed one from fixed one. Okay, so so that's a so 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 in a in a maybe I. So, so in a, with the Ricci curvature, we consider the, the Einstein equation. So, so, so since the number of components of Ricci curvature is same as number of metrics, you can ask this equation. Okay. So lambda is a called is a constant called Einstein constant, and uh, and this is a system, and this system is a invariant and the diffeomorphisms. You try to solve these equations. Of course, of course, in uh, in general, Einstein equation is uh, is not f not only for Riemannian metrics. In the general, you should regard G as uh, as, as dynamical things, as a kind of Lorentz type metric. But uh, so far in the geometry, we only concern the static solutions. So we assume G is uh, G is uh, uh, Riemannian at the moment. Okay. So we basically want to uh, in the geometry. Or in this, uh, uh, in many applications so far, we try to solve these equations. But how do I solve these equations? Okay, how do how do we solve these equations? Uh, this is a system. Okay, it's elliptic, but it's not uh, strongly elliptic. And uh, as you will see, uh, it's nonlinear too in the moment. So, so, so one way to do that is to use this Ricci flow, which was introduced by Hamilton in the early 80s. So, so this is a uh, Parabolic equation. So, so, but it's, as I said uh, again, it's uh, because uh, in the whole equation is in variant and diffeomorphism groups. And uh, so it's, it's not strongly, uh, strongly parabolic. So at the beginning, when uh, Hamilton introduced this, it took him a, a big efforts to prove even local existence. So on later on, a slightly later on actually, that the talk found a very simple proof. So basically, it says that for any initial metric, for any initial metric, and uh, you can uh, find the solution, unique solution of this uh, equation with given initial metric. And uh, but how far you can solve this equation, you don't know. This capital T may depend on initial metric, and uh, so on. Okay. So but at least the local existence only tells you, uh, uh, this uh, you can solve up to some time. So. So, so, so f f to get a little bit of feeling of this equation, let me write uh, the <coughs> write uh, write down the equation in the local coordinates, at least in the in the leading term. So, so, so if I choose a coordinates such that uh, it's harmonic, so this means uh, this Laplacian also depends on this metric, so called harmonic coordinates, right? Because we have a 
with coordinates are not less recanonical, so we, we want to choose some good coordinates. So this is one way to do that. And then the, the, the rich flow looks like this. So if you, regard, uh, di uh, if you discard this term, this is exactly just a, a heat equation, heat equation. But remember, this time Laplacing depends on a metric, depends on metric. It's defined in terms of metric, okay? So, so Laplace is basically defined at acting on a function. It's just the determinant of gij and, uh, and the inverse and df dxl and uh, and then the divided by determinant. Okay, so that's a that's a Laplacian operator for giving for any giving giving metric. Okay, so you can see uh, this is nonlinear, but at least you can see uh, uh, it is nonlinear and also it's a it's a uh, it's kind of like a parabolic equation. So this is uh, this term means it's quadratic in the in quadratic in the derivative of metric tensors. Okay. So so now we first consider the simple case. We always start the case when the, we know. Okay. So so the case of surfaces. So always say uh, the dimension is two. So now the does, uh, in the in the two dimensional case, there's only one curvature component. So either or rich curvature it has only one component, so it's all determined by one scalar functions. Okay, so you, you can write rich curvature as this. Okay, so 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 even though this itself at the beginning is a, is a matrix, but you actually only determined by uh, one functions called a scalar curvature. Okay, so so since it's a curvature is only determined by one function, the, you try always try the simplest things. So you change a metric this way. You, you, you suppose you write down your solution in terms of uh, the initial metric plus some conformal factor. So ut is a function, right? So you somehow expect that by, 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 uh, by choosing the appropriate ut, you can, you, can, you can make this to be a constant. So that to be constant is a, is a solution of this. So this time, the, the solution of Einstein equation simply means scalar curvature is constant. Okay, so so then you plug in, you 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 manipulate a little bit, and you see a rich flow becomes is reduced to this equation. Okay, so now this time is a is a scalar equation, and this Laplacian here depends only on g zero. I, I should put zero here. Okay, now this Laplacian only depends on g zero, namely. It's this here, but with G, metric G replaced by G0. It, uh, so this Laplace has nothing to do with the U. So, so this is a scalar equation. It's uh, easier than a system. And uh, you do this. Okay? This is semi-needed and it's easier to solve. And indeed, we have a global solution for a normalized flow. So, so, so you look at this equation. This is essentially the same as the previous equation. Why? Because uh, you can simply reparameterize the ut and the scale the scale the u, u u I mean uh, not scale the sc and uh, add some constant depend on t to u. So so basically what you do is uh, you look at the previous equation ut and uh, now you goes to like uh, like this you you reparameterize this and plus some constant t and this is. Uh, New t, okay, and uh, and this is in a, in the flow of a, in, on a previous page, a solution of a previous page, in the, in the, in the page, and uh, now this v t is this solution here, okay, so 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 this is uh, like this is reparameterization, this is just kind of like scaling a metric, so you can get this, okay. So the rule of the, this change just make a volume to be fixed, volume to be fixed. Then you can, you can prove, actually Hamilton proved, there's a global solution, okay? It's actually easy to prove. I usually, when I was in Princeton, I had a junior student to, student to a junior, need to do a junior thesis. So I say, okay, read this part and uh, write down the proof and uh, you, you pass, okay? 
So, so, <laughs> so at least it's, uh, it's this part is uh, even though proved by Richard Hamilton, but it's, uh, this is uh, it's, uh, it's not a difficult part he, he did. Okay. <coughs> the difficulty part comes from here. So as t goes to infinity, this gt, gt remember is this now, gt is a, again is a exponential ut uh, g0, okay? That's the solution of rich flow, and this is a, a reduced equation, and converge to a metric constant curvature. So namely you get a solution of this, okay? I guess, uh, so this is uh, first proved by Richard Hamilton, but he needs some actual condition on the initial metric, and, uh, and man, uh, cho, uh, the bancho and the proof uh, proved uh, uh, remove that condition and later on we realized that in the positive case you 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 uh, you, you can prove the metric limiting metric is has a constant curvature okay and uh, 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 without using a fact the underlying space is a sphere okay so in a, previously they need to assume this uh, underlying space is uh, is a sphere then uh, you can prove uh, uh, underlying space is gi uh, giving, then, the, then the, uh, basically in the case of sphere, then the you can prove it's a, the metric, limiting metric has to be Einstein metric. But uh, that a priori assumption can be removed, that's what uh, we, we observed, okay? So, so, so what's the upshot of this? So upshot of uh, this, uh, what the conclusion of this is the following. So we, as a consequence, we get the following things. Given any two-dimensional manifold, a conformal class. Conformal class means I change the metric this way, change the metric this way, because uh, doing change the metric this way, change the metric this way does not change the angles, right? It's, uh, it's only change the size of uh, vectors, okay? We change the direction. So then uh, we can always find uh, the metric G, that's a limiting metric by using a Ricci flow with constant curvature in a given conformal class. Given conformal class. So then uh, a very classical theorem of uh, in a differential geometry tells you M has to be a quotient of uh, this standard space. So this is a Riemann sphere, a Euclidean space, and a hyperbolic disk. Okay. So, so of, of course uh, this conclusion is well known. It's well known, okay? If you, um, in the, re, uh, like, uh, you can use the Riemann mapping theorem to, 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 to get this, okay? But this approach I present to you has some uh, special feature. Is uh, I don't need to a priori assume there's a job, I know the geometric structure of underlying space. So what I start with, is I start giving you a two manifold and uh, I run the Ricci flow. So this purely is kind of analytical differential geometric problem. And in the end, I get a conclusion. So the space, the topology of space is like that. So, so you can think this is a geometrization of two manifolds. Okay, so, so, so this different approach of that. Okay, as, as so, and this approach is uh, what we like to do in high dimensions or in other cases. So, so a priori we start with something, we don't, we don't know the structure, and we by solving a dif line, uh, differential equations and most, in most cases are non-linear equations, and uh, then you can get the conclusion of underlying space, the geometry or topological underlying space. Okay, so, so this is a kind of thing, is a, an, and we we uh, we we uh, quite popular now in the in the things. I will show you a few examples of that. So 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 actually, um, in the early late I mean late eighties, when uh, I graduated from Harvard, I went to a Princeton, and Susan that time was still in the Princeton. So I read his uh, lecture notes, a book. So when he studied, he, that book discussed the geometrization of three manifolds, but he also studied with two dimension. Okay. But uh, of course he studied two dimension in a different way. He, he never used the equations like that. Okay. So, so, so I like that uh, approach. So I give you a two dimensional picture first. Okay. And the two, two dimensional picture is uh, always uh, 
nice because you can get a clean conclusion and, uh, uh, and technically also simpler. But, but, uh, but understanding two dimensions in a different way and a clear way might help you to get, uh, get uh, uh, things in the, in the high dimensional cases. So, uh, so, so I guess <coughs> in, in my own <coughs> research, not, this is not the only case I do that. Okay. <laughs> so, so now approach can be extended to uh, two categories in high dimensions. So, so one is a three manifold case. Okay. One is the color manifolds. Okay, that's what I want to tell you next. So the so first part, or actually first 1.5 part, is about the Ricci flow. Okay, so because we know the most about the Ricci flow. So so besides these two cases, we can still use the Ricci flow to classify manifolds with certain strong positivity condition on curvature. So if you start with some metric, we say assume a curvature is uh, positive in some sense then you can still use the Ricci flow to study that. But that will not be my uh, emphasis today. Okay. So I emphasize today, I don't want to, even though I still make restrictions, three manifolds or canon manifolds, but I don't want to impose the curvature conditions. Okay. So, so, but I, I, I should mention it because these two cases are not only applications of Ricci flow. Okay. So, so, so I, I will briefly and uh, remind you, uh, tell you what, uh, what uh, we know about three manifolds. And, uh, but this only uh, briefly because this is, uh, uh, I'm more interested in the second part. So, so assume M is a closed three manifold. So then the static solution of this, uh, again, by Einstein equations, as I already wrote there. So we all also know by classical theorem in the uh, uniformization theorem in the in the textbook, is uh, if M admits Einstein metric, then its universal carry is of this form. Okay, so this is a case when N is three. I should put three here. Okay, uh, it's not true when N is big, strictly bigger than three. Okay, so so at least uh, you know if you can run, if you are lucky enough, if you run the Ricci flow as we did in the two dimensions. And uh, say you find uh, you uh, by certain normalization process like this similarly, and you can find the global solution, and the global solution has a limit. Then you get the equation, solve the equation of uh, solve the Einstein equation. Then you can also get this. So you that's like say you 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 geometrize you geometrize the the three manifolds. Okay. So but but the knife is a. Uh, is a uh, is a uh, difficulty. It's more difficult in dimension three, so so that's not true in general. Okay, so so certain geometrization conjecture states any three manifold can be decomposed in a natural way into three uh, this Einstein three manifolds and the plus some graph manifolds. So 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 uh, there's actually five times. Geometry. Those geometries are actually kind of degenerated cases, okay? uh, which I probably mentioned a little bit uh, uh, later on. So, Pangori conjecture is the case when M is simply connected. M is simply connected. So, so and this decomposition is decomposed to this because to my audience I mentioned is a is a is a is a cut along certain tori, so called incompressible tori. So, incompressible means the fundamental group of a tori is injected to a to to a to a corresponding three three manifolds. Okay, so 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 if a Ricci flow, I already mentioned this sentence. If a Ricci flow has a global solution, and possibly after appropriate scanning, like what we we did in two dimensions, though in, in two dimensions we cannot do on the functions, we do directly on the metrics here. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and also assume it's a which converge to a smooth metric G infinity. Then you can prove the limiting metric is the Einstein metric. That means solve that equation over there. And so the universal covering is standard. So it's like on the previous pages. Okay. So one successful example is due to 120 years ago. That's actually made the Ricci flow interesting. 
Okay, because this is the first case, rich flow solve the problem, the other means cannot do, other methods cannot do, actually still cannot do at the moment. For example, you try the variational method, it cannot, can, one cannot do it. That's right. So he proved that if uh, initial metric has a positive rich curvature, positive means uh, rich curvature as a matrix, it's a positive definite matrix, okay? And uh, then the rich flow has a global solution, of course, after scaling, okay? which converge to smoothly to a metrical constant positive curvature. Okay. So, so if you assume initial metric has a positive rich curvature on the three manifold, then you can do as we knew in the dimension two case. Dimension two case. And, but uh, but uh, again, and I should say, even if you get same conclusion as in dimension dimension two case, and the proof is much more complicated, okay, much more. So they are not of uh, uh, very nice computations and very <coughs> uh, clever <coughs> checks, okay. So, so, so however rich flow develops singularity at a finite time, the singularity can be either forced by a topology or caused by a, a complexity in the metric behavior, even if the manifold has a simple topology. And uh, actually, the later singularity can occur along the proper subsets of manifolds, not the entire things. And uh, this second type singularity is, uh, is, is the most difficult part, most difficult part, okay? It's make a, uh, uh, even the, like a topology, even you run things on the S3, and, uh, and uh, you don't know what the flow goes, okay? You cannot track every step. You only know it's like heat equation. I put a heating, heat source here, and so in certain time it will be equally warm in the room. But you can, I cannot check, it's hard to check each step, how heat is dis, 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 dispersed, right? But I, in the end, I know everybody feel happy, okay? <laughs> so, 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 so it's one is not to study more general evolution process called the rich flow with the surgery which was first introduced by Hamilton for four manifolds with a positive, positive isotropic curvature. Now don't worry about this means isotropic, it's just certain positivity and they impose some condition. So, 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 so this time the evolution process is still parameterized by uh, interval in time, so that for each t in this interval, the definition there is a compact three manifold, mt, Mt, okay, but there is a discrete set of times at which uh, the manifold the matches undergo a topological and metric discontinuities. We call it surgery. Okay, so in each of these complementary intervals to uh, to uh, to the singular time, the evolution is the usual Ricci flow. Though the topological type of Mt changes uh, as t moves from one complementary interval to a next. So by that, uh, let me show the uh, uh, to illustrate a little bit by picture. So we say we look at this uh, the T, okay? We start from zero, and let's look at this is like um, M. We start from M to M zero. So we have uh, this, what I said here is there's a uh, uh, discrete uh, time. Uh, probably this, uh, this mean maybe infinite many of them. So in each of these interval, this, uh, in each of these interval, I have a manifold mt. This manifold is a fixed, okay? And uh, mt here, okay? So this is a, uh, okay? And, uh, and, uh, and so I have a different manifold, but uh, so this is, maybe I should say this is a t, actually m0, this is m1, this part. M mt here is in this interval here, okay? So, so, so here you have a rich flow, standard rich flow, but on a different manifold. But one, one time, one t cross this t1, t2, and so on, your manifold may change, may change, may change. Okay, so manifold m0 may not be same as m1, and may not be same as m2, but, uh, but you need, you, you uh, but for, 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 to be useful in geometry, we need to know how this change occurs. Okay, we need to understand 
what's the nature of a change. Okay. So this is basically a, and so, so to be useful, when needs to control both the topology and the geometry of the surgery process at a singular time. So by that I mean uh, control this process. Okay. So, so for example, it's crucial for topological applications that we do a surgery along the two spheres. So rather than a surface hygienous. So, so since we are talking about three manifold case, so each time you do this surgery, you should, should like cut along the surface. Right, and uh, and then you do something or uh, glue it up or whatever you do something, but it's always along the surface, right? So because surface separate uh, two two parts of three dimensional things, so but but surgery along the tooth field produce the connected connect sum and so on, but if you do surgery along the toroid, can completely destroy the topology, changing any three metaphor into another. So it's like what yesterday I mentioned, the handle body decomposition. If it's a two sphere, then we can handle it. If it's hygienous, we become hopeless. Okay. So very importantly, you need to know why do a, even though from M0 to M1 or M1 to M2, you need a, you need to you, you might go through a quite complex surgery, but topologically I will only I will have to make sure we do a surgery along the two spheres topologically. Okay? So, so that's what the paramount did. Okay? We only need to do a surgery along the, I guess too many only, but it's a, so only along the, need to do a surgery only along the two spheres, and the change in topology can be completely understood. That's what the, he did. Okay? So, so of course, when he did, uh, to be more precise, he did by so proof the so-called uh, long collapsing things. Okay. So actually uh, Hamilton also realized uh, this point, I should say, because he, he actually before, way, uh, a few years before the Parma, he actually pro proved, uh, claimed something called the little loop lemma. So that's something like uh, long collapsing things. So, but, uh, but then uh, that proof was not quite right. It's actually more complicated, but not, not right, unfortunately. So, so, so his paramount really breakthroughs uh, was to to prove the, that little loop lemma and uh, in a simpler way, simpler way and uh, and a better conclusion. So then uh, he can get this, get this. Okay. So so maybe I I guess I spent too much time on that. So 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 anyway. So it's a uh, so so then you can do a uh, you can find uh, this uh, surgery time. You can find the solution. With surgery, so namely is uh, what is described here. Okay, described here. So, so, but the Perma didn't approve, uh, uh, and and he knows uh, topological change in the three manifold as one crosses a surgery time. For example, cross of cross T one here is a connect sum of decomposition together with the removal of a connect components. Each of these components is diffeomorphic to to this. Okay, and all these manifolds are. Well understood. Well understood. Okay. And uh, all the, why this? Because he did only su surgery only needs to be done along the two spheres. Okay. And uh, then once you establish that, it's not hard to see these things left. Okay. I guess many topologists can do that as a proper homework. Okay. As exercise. So so. But uh, note, uh, he did not uh, prove uniqueness of rich flow with surgery starting from at a given point, metric. So he, he did topologically, but metrically, or, uh, metrically, this metric here is not uniquely determined by metric b before the surgery, okay? And uh, after that, these are after that, these are after that, okay? So, 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 so uh, to, to prove in a Pangori conjecture, Perman sketched the proof of following result for, for finite uh, extinction. So, if M T M is simply connected, then M T become empty. So in this solution, I, I can say M T can be empty. That's a perfect manifold, nothing to be worried about. So 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 then you can if if this happens, so if this happens for after some some surgeries, then we call say uh, 
rich flow is become extinct at finite time because it goes nowhere along. Okay? So then uh, if you go back to see these things here, each time you do a surgery, each time you do surgery, you basically only either connect some or remove some of these simple manifolds here. And by simply connecting this, you can rule out this and rule out that and so on. Okay? So, so then, uh, then you only find the times and uh, after this simple manifold, you get nothing. And uh, then you know originally what manifold is, right? Is that right? So it's, uh, each time you know what, the, what things you cut off. Okay? In the end, it becomes uh, perfect. Then, the, then you know what's the topological type here. You backwards. So this way you solve the Pangori conjecture. Okay, you solve the Pangori conjecture. Okay, <laughs> so essentially this cannot happen either if you assume to simply collect it. And the only thing left is uh, yeah, yeah, taking out the sphere again, okay, each time. So, 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 <coughs> so that's a, uh, an, 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 so I guess I already said this, so, so, um, <coughs> And let me drop that. Okay. So to prove a certain geometrization conjecture, one is led to uh, study uh, asymptotic behavior above reach flow with the uh, surgery. And to finish uh, proving a uh, geometrization conjecture, I uh, use the result on collapsing three manifolds with a curvature locally bounded from below, and geodesic convex, so on. So, so a detailed proof also, also in our second book. And the other proof were given by uh, Klein Knot and also Shiyoya Yamaguchi, based on the heart theorem of uh, Parama, in, in uh, published the preprint in 1992. So, so actually, this Parama theorem is much harder. Uh, it's much uh, harder theorem than uh, uh, than than needed in this uh, in this in these applications. So, and uh, uh, Kapovich gave a more readable proof of such a heart theorem. So uh, in fact, uh, uh, in uh, his uh, paper, second paper, Parma also said that uh, you, you don't need to really need this theorem. There is a way bypassing this. And basically, what, uh, that's what we try to do. Okay. So, so, uh, so as I said, mentioned yesterday, Baumler, my former student, found a gap in the, in the Parma's proof of generalization conjecture. Actually, Baumler is, uh, was probably was, uh, the, anyway, let's relax a little bit. So Baumler was uh, from uh, Munich, and uh, he was probably the only undergraduate thing I knew who understood uh, Paramount's proof <laughs> <laughs> while he was an undergrad student. Okay, so, 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 uh, so I tried harder to bring him to Princeton. So, <laughs> so, so uh, so it, uh, it, uh, it concerns uh, symptotic behavioral things, and, uh, and so, but anyway, the, this gap was uh, fi fixed by uh, per, uh, Baumler himself. And uh, actually, he proved a much stronger version of a geometrization conjecture, as I mentioned yesterday. So, so this is, uh, I make it more precise today. So, so, so let M be any closed three manifold for any initial metric, there's a unique rich flow with surgery. So this means uh, unique, that means uh, the solution here is unique determined by previous, uh, even they are on a different manifolds. Okay. So, so even through a surgery. And, uh, so, so, so this means uh, basically uh, they are only five many surgeries. Parma didn't prove that. And the GT becomes a classical solution when uh, uh, this is uh, for large. Okay. So namely, there's no surgery after times uh, sufficiently big. And then either GT is become extinct at finite time, or after appropriate scaling, GT converges to a finite set of canonical metrics. Okay. So, 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 it's, uh, uh, so uh, GT has a limit. A limit uh, and the uh, finite set, the cut is along the incompressible tori. Okay. And uh, uh, canonical metrics here is not necessarily Einstein metrics. Because uh, according to Thurston, there are eight kinds of eight geometries, and the four, of, uh, five, three of them are a solution of this. So three of them, so the so eight geometries in the dimension three. Okay, and the three given by this. So namely, it's a flat 
namely it's a coaching of this or this or, or H hyperbolic cerebral coaching by this. Okay? And uh, then there are any other five is like degenerated. For example, simplest the example is this. The Riemann surface across the circle. Across the circle. Okay, or something like that. I right? just give you the easiest things. But uh, you can still look at the canonical metric here, but canonical metric, for example, this example, canonical metric is on the Riemann surface. Okay, okay, on the Riemann surface. So, 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 so there is also a limit, and the metric limit, okay, except that you have more possibilities. Okay, so, so anyway, so let's, so now your likeness of GT is amount to proving any finite time surgery is canonical. So you have, should have a model for this. So when you go through here along the, along the two sphere surgery, but that not only the topology is fixed, as Perman proved, the geometry is also fixed. But, but that is still open question. And, uh, and, uh, and <coughs> there is a model by uh, some people, by uh, Ban Chou student Dan Loft. But, uh, <coughs> but it's, uh, uh, we, we need uh, to, to do, uh, uh, in general, it's still open question. Okay. So, so, uh, so we, we, uh, I, I, if you are interested, you can do this. And so, so recently, the uh, Baumler and the Kleiner found a, a way of constructing rich flow with surgery, which depends on initial data continuously. Okay? So in some sense, they got uniqueness, but they still, still don't know whether surgery is canonical. Okay? The geometry is not fixed. So, so this uh, solves part one in, in a sense, okay, in a weaker sense. So, so I emphasize this because it's still a, uh, somehow I, I, um, I believe it's, it's, uh, it should be doable in somehow now, okay. So it's a, uh, so, so this, uh, uh, that after this, the Baumler has essentially solved the problem one and two. So module this can uh, this final time surgery is canonical, uh, we don't know yet. And so he proved uh, the following so in the in the two hundred pages papers, in the in the actually five papers in the series in the geometry and topology. He did uh, uh, there are only five many surgeries for rich flow with GT surgery. So there are only five many of them. And more th moreover, he proved uh, the GT for T sufficiently big, the curvature of GT is uh, bounded. So this uh, actually means uh, up to scaling curvature is bounded. So you can curvature bounded, you can talk about the limit, about limit. Okay. So this results uh, should be elaborate to prove after proper scaling, GT converges to canonical metric. He didn't do this, but uh, I think this rest is doable. This it's more like a linear uh, stability theory for linear analysis like uh, prove something stable, you, 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 you analyze linearized operator and then uh, regard the equation as, uh, as a perturbation, of non-linear equation is a perturbation of linear equation. But anyway, this, uh, he, he didn't do this, but it's, uh, uh, it's, it's <coughs> the rest should be a doable question. Maybe it uh, could be a very good uh, project for PhD thesis and so on. Okay, but it's, uh, it will take some efforts because uh, you you can probably can write a few thesis because uh, there are five cases at least <laughs> five geometry left. <laughs> you you need to analyze uh, each separately. Okay, but uh, but uh, um, should be able to do that. Okay, so 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 in high dimensions, so. Uh, sorry. In high dimensions, if the initial metric G0 satisfies strong curvature conditions, such as as a positive curvature operator or isotropically positive curvature, then this curvature condition is preserved. So there are many works, like a uh, positive curvature operator by uh, and Hamilton and the Bundle, uh, and uh, Bundle and Mock did for, for bisectional curvature case in the Keller case, and uh, Brando Shun a few years ago, and uh, proved uh, this uh, uh, quarter pinching theory. That's uh, 
called, called isotopic uh, positive curvature case, and so on. So we can use this to prove uh, important uh, geometric theorem, like uh, char characterization of space with positive curvature operator. This is uh, um, by working and the bomb and the working. And uh, I think there's maybe no E here, sorry. Okay. And, uh, and the quarter pinching theorem, you know, uh, if, uh, if someone in the Riemannian geometry in the audience, you know the quarter pinching theorem was a big theorem to, for many years. It's a problem raised by Klingenberg, probably, at least a German school. But it used to be uh, first proved uh, by other means. You proved maybe 0 0.9 pinching. Oh, or maybe slightly smaller. So, so the pinching means uh, the maximum curvature component compared with the, mi the minimum curvature component is, uh, is bounded by. So maximum curvature, uh, maybe I should put the minimum curvature, is uh, bigger equal to a quarter. Then it has to be a sphere. It has to be a sphere. Okay. So, so of course, if it's one, it's already constant curvature, right? So, so, and the previous probably proved 0 0.9 or 0 point uh, improved to 0 point uh, something, okay? So it's uh, certainly far away from, uh, from uh, uh, this quarter, quarter in chain. So, so, and also generalize a Franco conjecture, which is uh, by Mock and by uh, myself and Genetti, okay? So, so this is uh, an, an in a high dimension with the curvature conditions. So I think I maybe just start a little bit for second part, then we take a break. Is it 50 minutes or? Um, I'll take a little break. And I, I first uh, do a little bit. So next I want to discuss a case when the rich flow has uh, important applications in a sense very similar to a three manifolds. Okay? And uh, this is still an ongoing program. But it's a, it's a, uh, uh, it it's a, uh, should be very uh, interesting. Okay, so a part of this was first uh, uh, first proposed in my ICM 202 talk, and then later on I, uh, together with my collaborator uh, who's uh, Zhang Song, uh, 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 a much younger guy, uh, and the form uh, in my uh, in my 207 paper. Okay, so. Uh, so, so since then, there are many have been many papers, and uh, we are I, in the rest uh, in in the next uh, uh, some time, I will sh give you some results. Certainly not complete. I give you major results, and uh, the the program is not finished yet. But it's finished. It will first uh, uh, classify algebraic manifolds by rationally, and if your method is purely uh, different geometrically. Not only you can classify algebraic manifolds, which algebraic geometer can probably can do that e too. Actually, they did more than we can do now. So, but uh, the method here you can also apply to Keller manifolds, which is uh, beyond the category of algebraic manifolds. Okay. So, so, so let me first uh, sh show you what is uh, uh, M. So assume M is a projective manifold or, or, or more generally is a compact Keller manifold. So this means first M is a complex manifold and uh, which admits a Keller metric. So, so Keller metric is given by its Keller form. It's just, uh, uh, so, so it's given like this. So, so, so uh, we, as I s said before, the Riemannian metric is given by a positive matrix valued functions. So, Keller metric first is given by a Hermitian positive matrix valued functions. So it's a, it's a, it's a locally it's a, matri it's a Hermitian matrix valued functions. And moreover, if you just this, it's called a Hermitian matrix. It's not a Keller matrix. We need more conditions, uh, namely, it's Keller form, uh, right is Keller form, okay? So even though this is uh, uh, defined in terms of coordinates, this form is actually globally defined. It's a two form. And, uh, and uh, G being Keller, you need one more thing, namely this is a closed form. Okay. So what this condition means is the following. Condition means, uh, so that makes the Keller geometry simpler, is uh, this, uh, 
So this condition, if you, uh, go, if you are interested, if you go back using a Hermitian condition, use this. First is a Hermitian matrix. Right? So this Hermitian property. And the secondly, you have this d omega to be closed. So this is same as to say it's commute. This is a complex derivative. OK, sorry. For all i, j, k. Right? So, so this is called integrability condition. Used to this, you can get uh, what? So locally, g i j bar is given by a function for some function for some function. Okay. So locally, this is locally. I mean, it's not hard to prove. This is like uh, if in the calculus you know locally, a closed differential form is always. Uh, one form is always a boundary of uh, some functions. Okay, so you basically use that twice here. Use that twice here. So, so this tells you this kind of matrix locally is determined by one function. That's actually you want to give you a simplest reason why we know much more about Keller geometry than uh, general Einstein equations. It's because of that fact. Okay, from that fact. So, so one example. Is uh, uh, maybe before that I should say, so the rich flow preserves this condition. Okay, so that is uh, if G zero is a scalar, so namely G zero satisfies the previous these two things, then uh, so so does uh, every G T along the flow. So 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 we can consider the scalar rich flow. So scalar rich flow is nothing but the rich flow confined to a scalar matrix. And this Kellerian condition is preserved by Ricci flow. Okay. So, so it's, you can think that's just a special solution of Keller, Keller uh, of Ricci flow. Okay. So, so, so analytic minimum model program aims at uh, we call it analytic because uh, what the, we, uh, the goal of this program is uh, is like a minimum model programming at rich geometry, but we like to use the analytic method to do that. Okay, we uh, to uh, more precisely, we want to apply a rich flow to classifying this Edry manifold, or more generally, a Keller manifold. Okay, so there are two parts. So one part is construct a global solution with surgery, and the second part is show such a solution converges to canonical Keller metric on a certain canonical model, and such a canonical model include the canonical metric include Keller Einstein metric. If you Still remember what I said in the previous two cases, dimension two case and three dimensional case. That's exactly what we did. Two steps, right? And uh, and we also need to do these two steps. Okay, step. But of course, uh, uh, it's a different category now. You need a different techniques and different uh, uh, things. And the surgery, uh, uh, which I will say more later. Okay. So. So, so first, let me show you uh, one thing. Then we take a break. It's uh, this uh, so-called sharp local existence here. So this time, you can uh, you can determine what this capital T, where you can solve the Ricci flow. Okay. So, so Keller Ricci. So this is proved uh, with my former student, and uh, and. Uh, so in, uh, in, uh, in, in, as part of his thesis, so we proved uh, this uh, keller rich flow has a unique maximized solution on a zero capital T, where the capital T is a maximum time T such that this is a Keller class. So, so that this is a positive. So omega zero is an initial Keller form. So it's a closed form. So it represents a cohomological class. And, uh, this is uh, the first chain class as a, as a cohomology class, a positive class. T. Okay. So I can, can have, uh, in, in case of Keller Ricci flow, 
And it's only true in case of Keller Ricci flow. It's not true in general for general Ricci flow. Is uh, we can we can cohomologically ca ca characterize the maximum time of uh, solutions. Solutions. So you can see uh, there's already some uh, beautiful properties. So so this results pre uh, generalize the previous works of uh, many people, and. Uh, and the proof is not that uh, difficult. Essentially, we again use this fact here. Okay. So, so once you have this, we can ask the uh, uh, following things. Is uh, if uh, C1M is not def yes? What do you mean by positivity? Of this? Positivity is uh, um, if it's uh, uh, one thing you can do is uh, is uh, can be represented by some positive form. Okay, so then maybe you can you can written as the uh, same as Komula class by some positive form, or maybe I shouldn't use psi. And the psi locally has a psi i j bar square root, and this metric is positive. Okay, and uh, and so but this form may not be a solution of a metric; it could be a positive form, and. Uh, in the algebraic case, and also in many Keller cases, you can, you can have a criterion to determine this without using differential forms. For example, this condition means, in the algebraic case, means uh, integration along any holomorphic curve is positive. So, then, uh, so this is a cohomological condition. So if I define this way, it looks a little bit analytic. Okay. So, so, so for example, if a C1 is not definite, for, uh, for example, C1 is, uh, sure, I, that's probably not the right way. For example, C1 is positive. Of course, for, if a C1 is positive, itself is positive form, when the T is sufficiently big, this cannot be positive. So you will have finite time singularities. Okay? So, so, so that's a special case I said here. Okay? So, 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 so what I try to say on this page is say, uh, Indeed, there are cases the capital T has to be finite. So there must be finite time surgeries. And you must do a finite time surgeries. And or say a finite time singularity does occur. So 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 then what happens to, to this? So Zhang Zhu actually proved that in some this is an analytical result converged to some things. There is a unique limit, but this limit is a weak limit. So, so natural question is so what, a, what the limit is. So maybe I'll stop here and uh, take a break. Thank you.